doing today is um, taking you through some of the bits that will help you with Word in terms of using DOM man because we had a lot of questions about that. So we'll be going through ordinary merging both for receipting and for uh, appeal letters. And at the end, we'll be also doing something I think a lot of people have expressed an interest in recently, which is about how to do email receipts as PDFs. And we're going to show you how you can use a product with in conjunction with DOM man to make that happen or in conjunction with Word. Um, what I'm going to do first off, Gary will be doing most of the stuff with Word. In order to do merging, particularly with the thank you merge, we do some complex stuff. We actually read in um, the letters that you write into a document. And to see what's going on there, we need something on the screen that lets us see what's going on behind the scenes. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to actually add that extra thing to Word so that that's easier to see. Um, and I'm just going to minimise this now and go into Word. Now, I'll be showing you how to do this in Word 2007, but I have some slides that will show you how to do it in Word 2010, and I'll talk a little about how you do it in earlier versions of Word. Now, in Word 2007, Microsoft introduced the ribbon into Office, and that's this sort of floating um, toolbar, palette bar, which changes depending on where you're in. And when we do mail merging, we go to mailing. Um, and we have the home for where it normally sits. Now, there are certain... Sorry, Andrew, can I just interrupt a little bit there? Are you able to speak a little bit louder? We've just had some feedback that it's a... Oh, sorry, okay, I'll try and speak up Thank a bit. Thank you. <laughs> okay, when they introduced the ribbon in Office 2007, they took away the ability to modify the ribbon. So you couldn't add any extra programs or any extra commands to the ribbon, and some things were actually missing. So what they did was they introduced this little um, shortcut bar up here, which allows you to put little extra things that you want to add yourself. So I'm going to show you how to add what we call view field codes there, and you'll be able to use that when you look at that up Gary is showing you. And I'll also show you how in Word 2010 you can actually add it to the ribbon, because Microsoft put the ability to modify the ribbon into Office 2010, but not 2007. So I'm going to click down here and go to um, more commands. So I'm going to customise this quick access toolbar. And I'm going to go, instead of popular commands, to go to commands for not in the ribbon. Because this particular command that we want to have on there that we'll be using for merging is not in the ribbon. If we scroll down the bottom, the view, we'll see a little thing with a, an A with curly brackets. It's called view field code. So when I find that, I add that here, and that will then become part of my, you can see it there, view field code that I can toggle on and off. Now, that's what you do in Office 2007. Now, you can simply do that in Office 2010. But in Office 2010, you also have the ability to add that or any commands for ribbon. And the way you would do that is you would right-click on the ribbon and say, customise the ribbon. And then this looks very similar to what I've just shown you with the quick access toolbar. Um, and you simply add the command you want, which is view um, field codes, into the ribbon. And that you can say so you've got a choice. In Office 2010, your choice is to either add it to the ribbon there or add it to the quick access toolbar. Now, I'm going to hand over to Gary now take over the word part of this. I'll be staying here for the rest of the for rest of the afternoon and I'll be here to answer questions with Gary at the end if anybody has any before me. Um, thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Good afternoon everybody, it's Gary here and uh, we're going to start uh, word up first. And I guess, so what we'd look at first would be, keep it simple, we'll look at how to uh, merge the letter. Yes, sorry, that's our smoke alarm this time. <laughs> but we're not on fire. Not on fire. Yeah. So if I open up Word, and the two things I've got, in data management, when I go through and I create my selection file and my merge data file, Donman at that point has finished the role I needed to do, because I've now got the text file that I can use to actually merge people letters, labels, uh, emails, whatever it might be, I use that same file to do that. What we'll do initially is just a merge to a basic letter. So on the screen at the moment, I haven't got any text, but if I had the text of a letter, I could open the existing letter, 
And the process from there is exactly the same. If I then go to mailing, you can see on the... Uh, oh, that was a funny message. <laughs> on the actual toolbar up the top here, you can see I've only got a couple of the buttons that are available because at this point I haven't actually attached data to this document. Okay. If I click on Start Mail Merge, I'll get the option there to do letters, email messages, envelopes, labels, whatever it is I'm trying to do. In this case, I'll keep it simple, we'll just do letters. My very next button across from there is select recipient and use existing list because again, I've already created the list or the text file in Donmen that I can use to attach to the document. From there, if you go into, because everyone's Donmen will be in a different place on the network. In this case, if I go into my local drive, my C drive, then I go into Donman, and then we'll have a DM work folder. Okay. In there at the moment, you can see because I'm in Word, showing me documents and my text files. So in this case, I've got my file I created before, just for the text. If I double click on that, you can see I've now enabled more of these buttons on the actual ribbon bar at the top. So what I want to do from now is start inserting the fields into the document. So if I click on Insert Merge Field, and there is two ways to do this. If you actually click on the button, you'll get a dialog box like this where if I insert, I don't get the option to go back to the screen at this point and actually do my formatting as I go. But I can just go down the field and say insert first name, insert surname, etc., and close. But now I have to actually go up to the top and do my formatting. Whereas if I said, well, that is a bit slow for what I'm trying to accomplish, if I click on the drop-down button at the bottom of that, I've got the same field, but now I can just click on the minute I go, I can insert the field, push enter, and that will give me the option to keep putting my fields in as I go down. So if I do street one, street two, and depending on your data, you may have street three. And now I can do suburbs. And normally between suburbs, state, and postcode, there's huge spaces just for readability. So then if I do state and postcode, and again, if I've got overseas, I can insert the country field as well. Yeah. So that would be my basic names and addresses in order to merge those across. If at the top of that I wanted to insert the date, because most of my letters will have the date, I can click at the top, just enter to move that down to where you want it to be, and the two ways you can do the date, you can do the standard uh, date in Windows, but just doing insert date, or if I use the merge field that's already come out of done then, I'll have a date field there. If I then go back down to the bottom of my fields, I've inserted to country, enter a couple of times, I can then get the option to put in my citation. If I'm just doing straight letters and I haven't got the ability to uh, do barcoding, which means I'm not using the rapid address tool or the quick address tool, then that would suffice for me putting the fields in from my name and address. Whereas if I'm putting uh, barcodes into the letter, I would have to put that at the top of the address, insert the merge field for barcode, and there's a couple of things I then need to do with this. One, I need to change the size of that. Uh, field. So if I now go back to the home tab up the top, and down here you'll see I've now got a field, a, a font, sorry, called data tools for say barcode, and I will then change the size of that to be 20 points. So that when I merge, instead of that just showing me a very large 37 digit number, it will translate that field into the actual barcode. So if I wanted to see how my merge is going to look when I finish that, I can now go back to the mailing tab, and you can see there's a big button here called Preview Results. If we click on that button, it will actually show me the data that's going to come in. And if I wanted to scroll through the record to check, you can just click on the, the button at the side here where you can go back or forward a record, just to make sure that for the variation of your records where in this very first case I've got uh, an overseas address, so I've got more lines, um, that they're all going to fit. If I preview, take that off, and then I said, okay, now I'm happy with the layout of that, 
I've got my text already written down the bottom here under the salutation or, or just written the text in. Then I go to finish and merge, edit individual document, and then all records. So once I do that, work will take over and now give me, in this case I've got four in my merge file, so I've now got four pages of my merge. So in a, in a nutshell, that is your most basic form of merge, where I'm just doing straight letters fairly much. So once I've done that, I can save that to a new document, I can print it out, I can do whatever I want. But exactly the same principle exists if I went back and said uh, on my mailings tab that I want to start a mail merge and I wanted to do labels. And Word has a little think about that. Once I've done that, it will then ask me what sort of labels that I'm doing. And this is where it's handy to have the box because there are such a variety of labels available nowadays that you need to make the labels exactly otherwise your fields aren't going to fit properly. So in this case, if I go to Avery A4, A5, and most of the common ones, you can see there's a whole list in here. So you can see that there is there is no shortage of different labels that you, that you, that you can get. So sometimes people will say to me, um, you know, how do I just do my label mate? And I don't know what sort of labels they are because I might have bought them at office work or somewhere else and it's not in the list. If that's the case, you'll see on the right hand side of the screen here, so then if I go up here to a, a more standard label size, okay, so I've got my 7 1. Okay, so I've got the, the 7161, 7162. These are all fairly standard size of labels. And actually, click on each label. On the right hand side of the screen, it will show you the dimensions of the label. So if you haven't got the, you know, the exact label there, try and find one that's as close in size to the match. If you needed to actually modify one because you have got some really custom labels you picked up somewhere at a good price, but uh, there is a price to pay because commonly the margins won't be exactly correct. But you can then click on details and it will show you all the details of the margin as far as how wide it is, the margin between them, how far from the top of the page, what your margin is, the whole detail. And you can then modify that and save that as a new label to suit your particular labels that you can use over and over again. In this case, I'm going to just use the standard uh, Avery one here. Okay. So I'll use the 7162. So if I do OK, Word's now complaining because I'm saving the changing the type of document. But now it's that basically put me so that if I go to insert next field, and do the same sort of thing. So I've got, uh, sorry, apart from my font being rather horrible there. So if I pick my fields in again, surname, if I've got post nominal, I can put those in. So it's just the same as we did to the actual document. Put all the fields in so that when you actually do the merge, it's going to come out and look correct. So once I put the fields in, so in this case, I want to put all the fields in, I'll get down. Well, I can, it's pretty basic. The straight through, and then again, if I do suburb, okay, so you can see I've actually run off the, the size of the label. So sometimes you will get that problem where the number of fields you're trying to fit on the label physically will not fit, and and that's again one of the big problems that people have where we buy, uh, you know, we try and fit 24 labels onto a sheet because. It's going to be less money to buy the sheets, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to fit all my data on, depending on how much I've got in the, in, in the actual uh, names and addresses of the people. But once I've done the first label, there's a button up here next to the video results that you can do upload label, and that will then copy exactly the same formatting to every label on the sheet. So if I needed to make a change, instead of hang on for my records, I might be able to take the script two out. Okay, I've now got suburbs. Again, if I insert my state and my postcode. I can then update labels again. And in theory, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, so it's not doing what it normally does. 
normally if I then click on update labels, it will update the whole sheet again to match exactly how I've done the, the previous record. So I'm not quite sure what's happening there. If I get preview results, see, it's worked. Okay, it, it has worked, it's got the subject state, but at the moment I have got a little problem because I've got a gap in my field here. Okay. So when you do the field and you and you create the actual data out of DOM man, the two options you normally have are formatted fields or separate fields. If you use formatted fields, the system itself will put the name and address into an address block where you'll have address one to eight potentially. Which means that, you know, Mr. W foot would have gone into address one, sixty six or six 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 Hunter Street would have gone into address two, etc. So that it doesn't matter if I've got a field that has nothing in it, Word won't take over and say, hang on, I'm gonna leave a space there because there's no there's no data there. Normally it will move them straight up. I think in this it's because I've actually changed it from a letter to a label that it's just got a field in there that it normally it normally wouldn't have and it wouldn't cause me any any issues. Yeah. But that's pretty much just standard merging as as far as, you know, doing letters and labels and things like that. We don't get too many problems with that unless people actually, you know, are doing a letter and they want to start putting fields in and, and do conditional statements, etc. which if we time allowing we'll have a look at later. But for my basic stuff, it's exactly the same. I can do letters and labels. The thing that we do have more um, problems with or people, you know, come up and, and, and or call us up and say, oh look, I'm having more of a problem is to do with the receipt letters. Because it's a much more complex process than this in this case, if I just close down this, no, I don't want to save my document. Then in this case, what I'll do is go and open up my receipt document. So with the receipting, there are three main components. One is your receipt template, which is the document. So I open that up. And in this case, I'll say, no, I don't want to open this reading really because I only want the option to make a change to it. So when I open that up, I normally have the letter date, the address block, as I was saying before. Uh, that would be formatted fields. But when you do um, the receipt, the system by default will do that. So you don't get the option normally to put title, first name, surname, etc. in. You can add those at the time that you're actually doing the move. So if you wanted to say in your letter, you know, thanks to the generosity of people like and put the person's first name in or the company name, then you could export those as separate fields and you can include those in the text of the letter. What Andrew was saying before about this button that you put up the top of the screen here for view field codes, if I click on there, we can now see that I'm seeing the actual behind the scenes workings of the field. And this is the one that people have the most problem with here. <laughs> so it's basically a field that when you do the merge, Go and include the text of where my domain drive and directory is. In this case, it's on the C drive domain DM work, and use the field called letter number dot dot. With the newer versions of Word, an issue that's crept up is because when you save a document in the new version of Word, by default it will use docx as the extension, not just doc. If you've got the new version of Word, ideally everyone in the office who's doing anything to do with the receipt merging will need to be on the version and then you can say yes all of my letters are going to be doc x you can't have a mixture of them unfortunately word will show you the document no matter what but there is a big difference between them because it basically will say i am not going to merge that particular letter because it's not called doc doc it's called doc x so i'm sure there's people out there that have said yes i've, <laughs> I've had that problem with We've dealt with that many a time. In this case, if I click the button, I'll go back to normal view. So at the top of the screen, I can see I've got my date, name and address, salutation. If I click where the text of the letter is, you can see it's all gone grey. It's really indicating to me that that is a field, the same as I click on any of the other fields. Okay, so one of the things to remember here, and very important, is that the letter is not really there. So the text thing on the screen is just the result of a field being there not the physical text. And down the bottom of the screen, whatever you have is your receipt layout, which is the bottom of the screen, and normally this is locked into a text box, which means that if my letter's a little bit shorter or it goes right the way down there, the receipt's not gonna move up and down the page, or if my letter is really long, the receipt itself will move to the bottom of the next page so that the text doesn't start overwriting it. With the actual letter itself, the stuff that gets inserted here, 
if I needed to make a change to the letter itself, I need to open the physical letter. So in this case, if I go and open up my letter general, okay, so the text of the letter really just needs to start on line one, whichever text you want in there, and then you can just save that. So it doesn't need to have the name and address, the date, or the receipt attached. There are circumstances that you would need to do that, and that would depend on if you were running in a sort of a, a, a multi uh, environment where you have different letterheads for different you know, sub-organizations within your organization where if I'm doing the receipts, I want a different letterhead to come out or I want different graphics, etc. on there. We're not very good at doing that when I do a merge. So ideally, I would then have a receipt document that really just had the include text line and it would have the letters themselves would be the whole layout. Okay, so there's a bit more work to maintain those, but either way you can achieve the same result. If I wanted to now say in my letter I now want to you know, not just say, yeah, this is our general donation letter, etc. I can tidy up the text and make it nicer. But if I now wanted to add a field in here to say, you know, um, thanks for your donation or your generous donation. Okay. So I could just say, look, let's amend that text. If I've got my basic text there saying, thank you for your donation of, and just before I have finished that sentence, I now want to add a field so I can say, thank you for your donation of whatever the dollar amount the person might have given me. Just like we did previously, I can now go back up to the mailing tab, select recipient, and again use existing list. With the receipt document itself, the data file is always called names.txt and it will be in your domain DM work directory. If I go in here to my domain DM work directory, and I've got names.txt. In your folders, you'll probably have names one down to seven, as well as names. Where that comes from is everything to do with the actual processing cycle itself. The system will back up seven times. So if something went wrong and I couldn't move the day or the printer just wasn't behaving and I couldn't get hold of someone from IT to come through, um, what I can do tomorrow is open up my receipt and say, so, look, I want to use names one or names two or any of the other file and just re-merge those because that data will still be sitting there until the time as I've you know, done the, the seventh run. So I would have lost that one. But quite a fault for my active document, if I use the name text file, again, I've now got more buttons available on the screen. If I click up here, I can now go through and say, okay, what I'm looking for, and you can see there's a whole lot of different fields in here. So what I'm looking for, if it's a single part donation, I can just use the field for donation. But when I preview the result, it will now show me the dollar figure. Okay, so that's a very common thing people do. The next evolution of that is people say, well, that's very nice, but I now want to say if it's over a certain dollar amount, I might want to put generous in here. So there is a way to do that, and that's what we'll look at now. So if I click where I want the field to go, in this version of Word, in Word 2002, 2003, um, there's a button on your Merge toolbar called Insert Word Field, which does the same thing. Microsoft, as we all know, likes to change things, and they like to change what they're called on the screen, which always makes it a bit of a challenge sometimes to find things. But in this case, if I click on Rule, you'll see then there's one called If Then Else. What this allows me to do is go through and find any of the fields that are in my data file, in this case, if I choose donation, because that's the field I'm looking at. So if I said if donation, and you've got all your normal you know, things as far as equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, etc. So in this case, if I said if, if it's greater than $50, I want to put some text in here that says generous. Okay. okay. Otherwise, I might put some other text in there. You can nest this in, in Word up to 255 times, <laughs> but in this case, that would be very extreme. So in this case, all I'm doing is saying, look, if they give me more than $50, I want to put generous. Otherwise, I might just leave the text saying, thank you for your donation. So you can, you know, do it to the level where you might say, look, I want to put the first one in saying, thanks for your donation. The second level being, you know, thanks for your kind donation, your very generous donation, whatever you need to do. You can customize where to sort of do that. And yes, it's a bit of a pain to do, but once you do the document the first time, it's 
you know, giving you that a little bit more personalization for each of the people to receive. So in this case, I'm saying, look, I'm just going to leave it as the one criteria. So if I do OK now, okay, so unfortunately, all of my donors have given me less than $50. As you can see at the moment, the document doesn't look like it's changing, and I can't feel the thing here. Again, if I click on the View Field button at the top, I can now see what's going on. And if I said, OK, look, I want to actually change that dollar amount to be 25, click on the View Field codes again just to go back to normal view. Okay, so those ones are all sub-50. As soon as we get one more than the dollar value I put in, which in this case I've got $30, let's now put the word in of generous. Okay. So you can see how that can help me customise my letters you know, very finely, and you can do it. It doesn't need to be a word. It could be a whole paragraph that you want to put in, depending on what's changing in the data. So you can use this mechanism for a great variety of things. And, and there, are, there are some places where we have done this, and, and particularly for hospitals where they might have, um, you know, one or two or half a dozen, you know, standard letters. They do want to put the text in saying, thank you for your donation to, you know, the maternity ward or the oncology ward or something like that. Because as long as I know in the data itself there's something that's changing that tells me that that's what the money was for, I can then utilize that using this field here to actually change the text of the document and the whole aspect of it. So I can, I can customize it and it means that I have you know, a smaller number of smart documents rather than having a whole lot of documents where I'm changing one or two words. So it, it can you know, um, make things a whole lot more personalized for the donor at the end of that process. Or just, I'd point out, gender-specific content. If yes. you wanted to have a paragraph that only appeared to female donors to say we're having a special function or something that was only for women, there's a way you could do that. Yes. Be used. So really anything in the data, if you said I'm outputting the sex field, so you knew it was a couple, it was male, it was female, uh, again, any of those fields, as long as you know what is changing, you can then use that rule to go through and say, this is what I want to do. So the basic principle of this is it says, if merge field, and in this case I've chosen donation, greater than 25 for generous. That's what to do if it's true. If it's false, you'll see there's another set of quotes at the end here. And if I wanted to put another statement in, I click in the middle there, and I can just go up and basically put another rule in. So that's how you can build it multiple times. Yeah. The first couple of times you do this, you do really think about it, and you'll probably muck it up, because I know I, I certainly did. But once you get the hang of it, it, it is a very nice facility to be able to use. Okay. So if I now say, that's fine, I want to save my document, I've added not just a dollar amount, but I've added an extra bit of text in there. Okay. I'll just go back, save my document. No. Okay. So once I've done that, I can now go through, if I go back to my receipt document, Go back to Mailings tab, finish and merge, and then edit individual document, and then all records. Okay, so basically I'm now getting the name and address of the person, the date, the text of the letter, which again we can see is in grey, and the receipt at the bottom. So if I've got people, like I've got the $25 person, nothing's changed. Okay, so I will basically have the text of different letters where I can see on the last one here it has put a generous donation of and it's put the dollar amount in. But really the thing to, to remember here is don't be tempted to sit here and now change the text unless it was something really specific for a particular person. All you're doing is putting a band-aid on, on you know, what might be a problem for your merge document. All you're doing is updating the field. You're not actually changing this the content of the original letter. So if per chance I got to the point where I said I've merged that and what I'm now getting in here is a field that says that it can't find the document. What I'm going to do at the moment is just show you how you can actually edit the, the main text file directly. So if per chance I've got into Word and said, oh, when I processed the donations, I said that these people should have got the general letter, but it actually should have been the newsletter. I mean, if you had lots of people, then this would be a, a very silly way to do it, but it is, is an option that you can do. So if I click up on the ribbon bar to edit recipient list, 
it will now show me all of the people. And as you scroll across, where you've got all the data, and you've got to see this one of the fields called letter number, or letter note, which is showing me the first person getting the newsletter, next one's getting the general, the news, general, etc. If you're on an older version of Dyna Management, you'll probably have that as a letter number. Or even people that have you know, migrated from the older version to the newer version are just sort of stuck in that, <laughs> that mode of thinking that it has to be a letter number. But under version 7 of Dyna Management, it can, it's actually a letter code. So you can tell your letters out to be a lot more English. If I now said, oh, look, the first person really should have got a different letter, and I don't want to have to go back and regenerate the, the data or modify the donation in any way, I can click on the name text file down here and, and edit, and that will pop up a box. I can go down, scroll down to the field, and I can see that it's got letter news. So if I wanted to just change that, I can just change that and close it, and that means when I merge, that person will now get the general letter. Yeah. So the same principle exists for any of the other fields. If you've spotted you know, something wrong and you said, oh, look, I can fix the donor so that next time that's fine, I've got an address you know, that's spelled wrong or their name's spelled wrong, instead of me having to muck around with you know, opening the batch, editing the donation in order just to create the receipt file again, I can edit that here directly. So if I said, look, that should have been here, Mr. Wally. So I can change that where I've got a full reference to it. So all of the fields have got reference to the actual name. I can change it here so that at least when I do my letters, everything's going to come out as I want. Then I would go back to the actual donor record, update the name, address, or whatever it is I need to there, so that next time I did either a, a, an appeal letter or I did receipts, etc., it is exactly the right text that's coming out. Yeah. But no, it's not uh, a very good thing to do if you said I've put the donation in for the wrong person because that can have much greater ramifications later when you actually do the end of day update. But it is just saying if you've got you know something that was just a simple mistake, a spelling mistake, something like that, I can fix it directly, then fix the donor so that I've, I've basically fixed it up totally. I, I haven't just you know said, oh look, I'll go back, I'll open the batch, uh, edit the donation, regenerate my uh, name's text file in order to get to this stage. So if I do OK, when I do the merge, oh, of course, again, no, strangely, it, it hasn't changed it. Obviously, my vision. Yeah, so there's a, obviously a spot in the actual text file. You can see I haven't changed that because I've got it down here and in my receipt is correct. So because I've edited the actual text file directly, when I get, before I print those out, I can then go back to edit recipient, back into the name text file and edit. You see at the top here, the very first field for address one is the one that I didn't modify. So if you get that sort of error, it's not very hard to actually go back, just amend it. Okay. Okay. So I've got address one. I've got that correct now. Okay. I've got citation is correct. The name line is correct for the receipt. Okay. So absolutely anywhere really that I needed to change something, I can go through and change it because any of the things are available. Okay. So there I've got. Okay. So in this case, instead of just having address one to six come out. I've also got surname and first name coming out as separate fields. Okay. So again, if I close that, I can see straight away it's now changed up here in my view of the data. So if I click OK, if I go back to the documents, see it's now updated that. That again is one of the common things that people say, oh, I've got to this point in my receipts and I've spotted the error. There are things you can do to, to you know, minimise the impact it's going to have on you for doing the actual letters themselves. If we chance, again, as I said before, I've got to, to the point where I've actually merged my letters, and in this case, if I go down and say I'm looking for a, a letter or letter text. Okay. So what has happened in this case is 
normally when I set up my campaign record in donor management, the first thing I need to do is say, have I got an existing letter that I can attach to that campaign? If uh, I've created the letter and I've ordered, you know, test um, space 12 or something like that, Word won't work with that. The code that I create in donor management to identify the letter and the physical name of the document have to be exactly the same, otherwise I'm going to get the error that we'll see now. So if I close that, just do OK. When I finish and merge, set the individual documents again, all records. I'm going to get an error message like this that says a field calculation error has occurred in, in this case, record one. And if you've got a whole lot of letters missing, you'll get that exact same problem, but you'll get it multiple times. So this is an error that lots of people have seen, and, and it's quite common that they get, but it's really just because I haven't set up my campaign on my letters correctly. If I do get to this point, again, I can use the view, you know, uh, the view field codes button at the top of the screen to click on there, and it will show me exactly the name of the document that it's trying to find. So then I have to go back to my DM work directory and make sure I've actually got a document that matches that name. Because, as I said, some people sort of call the code one thing and then call the letter something else. Because this is a letter that has a code attached, but you can't call it, you know, letter appeal, uh, receipt, thank you, you know, 2012 or something like that, because it just physically won't work. It has to be matching exactly what we've done in data management. Yes. In this case, the underscore is there purely so that when I get into Word, um, it gives me much more readability. When we went from letter number, which was pretty easy to see because you'd have something like letter one, letter two, letter three, etc. When we started putting a code which allowed me to put an extra eight characters on the end, if I didn't have the underscore in there, it means that the letters are actually harder to distinguish one name from the other because they all look <laughs> you know, fairly similar in name in Word. I can't have a space in the name because if I do that when I go to do the mail merge, Word will just see letter. It's not smart enough to look to see if there's a space in the name. And it will just say, I'm looking for something called letter doc. So again, you'll get back to this error where it says, no, very much, I've got a, a non-valid file name, which means it just can't find the document that it's expecting to find in the actual working directory. If you don't have your letters in the actual DM work folder, because some people prefer to have a separate folder you know, called letters or something like that, it really means that when I set up this merge field, I can just include that into the path here. So in this case, I might have C drive, domain, DM work, then I might have letters, and again, two backslashes, and then I have the field. Yeah. So if that's something that you prefer to do, it's not a big problem to actually um, modify the document path in order to do that. But again, you can't have a mixture of the documents in, you know, DM work and the other half in, in the letters folder. They have to be consistently in the same place because we're telling it for this field to really look in at this exact location on the network and go and find the actual document. Yeah. Again, it's, it's something that does come up fairly commonly with people that I, uh, I save it onto my documents or I save it under, you know, fundraising, you know, appeals, etc. It's not going to find it there, unfortunately. Because you can have you can have such the variance of things that you want to put in there. Okay. So in this case, I've got to that point. And if it isn't, there is no uh, valid file name, if I thought, well, no, that's correct, I need to go and check that. Again, I can go into Word, just open, or through Windows Explorer, whichever way you need to do it. So if I go into my domain folder, into DM Work. And I can then see all the letters there. And you can see here with the underscore in the name that it does make it much clearer to read which letter is which. Yeah. So I've got my letter news, my letter general, but I don't have a letter test. Okay, so that's why the actual merge fails. So somewhere where I've actually done the setup of the campaign and the letter, I haven't done everything. So when you first set up a campaign, what I'd normally suggest to people is if you don't have a, a letter already written, is at least to go in and say, okay, I'll save myself some angst later. I just want to go in, start a blank document, and then create. So on my blank document, I might say, this is going to be the test letter. Okay, or this is going to be the, uh, you know, the winter newsletter 2012. Just do some text that you know when you do the merge. Oops. 
I haven't got the actual text there yet. If I then save my document, I don't have to save that. Again, look in my DOM and work directory. And in this case, I'm now going to create the test letter. And you can see down the bottom on this screen here where it's got save as type. This is where I am saving them as doc off. Where if I save it as a standard Word document, you can see it changes the extension to docx. Yeah. As I said before, it has a huge impact on, on your actual merging. Yeah. And when you first get to this version of Word, it's thrown many a person because they're, they're, they just say, well, I can still see it and it has the Word logo when I'm looking through Windows Explorer, but it is a totally different sort of you know, file. So if I now save that, go back to my receipt merge, yeah, so I'm back on my receipt and I just said, well, now I've fixed up that letter. I just basically want to be those days again. I don't need to change anything. I can go back to finish and merge, edit individual documents, or records. Yeah, and in this case, you can see I haven't done a mistake. Uh, so, you know, as far as I, it's saying I can't find the document, but I have got some text there will, will sort of alert me that, hang on, I haven't done the physical document yet. So if someone else is writing the document for you, at least you can say, okay, look, I've got to this point. I can always say this is a document, paste the text in later, if, you know, if it's written or paste another letter into there. You don't paste the letter into your actual receipt template. Because again, paste down that. If I go back to the receipt, so the very, very important thing to remember with this is that the text that you see there is just a field. If for chance someone came in and said, oh, when I first opened this up, it's the wrong letter, the first thing to do is wait until you actually finish the merge because the letter won't refresh as soon as you open the document. Uh, it's something that's changed in Word itself in version, say, 2000, I think, or even 2002. As soon as you open the document, this field refreshed itself. Every version since that doesn't do that. So when you first open it up, don't say, oh, hold on, this person should have been getting the, the memoriam letter and it's not on the screen, because until you've actually merged it and refreshed it, nothing's changed. It's going to show you what the last good letter was that was merged, which in this case, you can see this is my last person, because it's the one that's got the generous and the dollar amount in it. And that's, uh, whatever letters you merged last time, when you bring it up, that will be the one you see straight away. So it's not until you actually finish the merge at the top of the screen here, go to the new document, this text is going to refresh. So there are there are key combinations, as Andrew was saying, that you can use to do that. But for, for most people, they have trouble remembering you know, all the different key combinations and strokes and things. So for two clicks of the mouse, it's much easier to go up, finish the merge, just do OK. And it will refresh the text straight away. Okay. So I, I, I have had calls from people saying, oh, I've done these donations and I've checked them twice and I've created the data file twice and, and I've done everything. And we can find that the only thing we didn't do was actually finish that merge and you know clean it up, basically. So there are a couple of traps to do with the receipt document. But they, they should they try and keep it simple. The more <laughs> Like most things, the more simple you keep it, things will work straight away. Okay. So really, the things to remember with this are the text that's in there is really just a field. And normally what we would recommend to people is once you've got your receipt template you know, all working the way you want, it is nothing but layout and field. Okay. There's, there's no real text in there as such. So normally we'd make this document read only so that when I open it up, I'll get an error message. So if I close that down now, so normally when I'm just processing the payments and Word will open the document for me uh, automatically. If I open that up now, on the screen you can see it's got, this is a read-only document, should be open as read-only. So for 99% of the time or maybe 100% of the time I say yes, open it as read-only. And that means that I can't now save that document if somebody's changed something here. So if, if there is some you know, layout change that I need to do, I want to go down here and put the logo in, I want to put the AVN, whatever I want to do, I say open it as not read only, so I can do that editing and save it. But when I'm just doing the day-to-day -day processing and merging, leave it as a read only document, because all you're doing is 
saying this is the template, and when I merge it, all you're doing is you know refreshing the data that's going into that template. It is a little bit harder in this version of Word <laughs> to make a document read only. It used to be very easy. There used to be in version if you still got version 2002, 2003 of Word, you can click on Tools, Options. And up there's a tab there called Security, which you can just tick Read Only, and then save the document. Super easy. In this version of Word, if I can remember how to do this, uh, if you click on the button at the top of the screen, go into Word Options, and I can't remember exactly where it is, here, but there is somewhere where you can go in. It might be under Save. Um, Auto Recovery. No, I, I will find that, and anyone who wants to know, give me a call later or send me an email, and I'll tell you how you can make them read only. But there is an option that you can go through here and say, well, I want this document now to be read only. The other way to do it is to physically do it on the drive. But if I were to go back into my, excuse me, if I go back into my computer, into my drive and directory where I've got my DOM main document. Okay. So in this case, if I wanted now to make repeat a read-only document, you can right-click on that and go to property, and on there you'll see an attribute that says read-only. So if I click on that and apply and save it, again, that will make the document so people can't accidentally overwrite and, and muck up my format. With the receipt itself, normally, um, most organisations will have a NAVA document uh, called Reprint, which should be an exact duplicate of your receipt document. The only difference is that it uses a file called 1REC, and that's for reprinting a receipt. Worst case scenario, if someone had mucked up your receipt big time, you said, oh, look, I can't remember what was in there, hopefully you have got a reprint document, and then open, save it back as receipt, change the merge file back over to be the name's text file. So that should, uh, and that has saved, you know, uh, hours of, of work for lots of people just to go back in. So if I had my receipt document, and I said, well, this is now mucked up, as I said, just look in your DM work directory, see if you have got a document called uh, reprint, open that up, and hopefully the layout will be exactly the same as your normal receipt. If you haven't got that, um, that is a good idea to generate <laughs> that uh, particular file. If you're on the newer version of Word, I mean, sorry, the new version of Domain, if you go into the housekeeping menu, you'll have an option there that says reprint receipt. And if I, I hadn't planned on doing this, but if I just go in. Is that 20 minutes ago, four questions? Is the last one you four questions? Yep. yep. So if I open the management, Just log in. When I go into housekeeping, okay, you'll have an option here to create reprint receipt data. So lots of people will go through and say, look, when I merge the receipts, I save them as a separate document in another folder on the network somewhere. And if someone rings up and says, I've lost my receipt, I have to go through, find the receipts for that day, look for all the receipts, find the one for that person and reprint it. Okay. In order to get away from that, because again, it's, it's something that does come up, if I go in program, all I really need to know is the donor number, and on the right hand side, use this little toolbar, so on the right hand side of the screen, so if I choose my donor number here, I can then click on the dollar sign, and that will show me the history for that donor, and from there I can double click, so that's the one I want to reprint, so yes, okay, in this case, I picked a bad one because it wasn't receipted, but normally it will then come up with your receipt name, um, the receipt number, the letter code based on the campaign, and down the bottom of the screen you can see it's now creating a file called 1REC. And again, just like your normal receipt document, down here we say load word yes, and I have reprint doc. Okay. So I think most people have got that in place, but if you haven't, um, it's, it's a much easier way than having, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds of megabytes of you know saved documents there that you may never have to access again. Yeah. So in this in this basic form, that really is 
as we you know do our mail merging in, in Word using the data that comes straight out of the data management to primarily by receipt letters, by uh, appeal letters, labels, uh, reminder letters for um, you know pledges, uh, membership, any of those sort of things. The mechanism is pretty much exactly the same. Yes. Oh, if you want to run through that. So what, what I'll do at the moment is Andrew alluded before about um, doing receipts to email, and he's going to run through that with you now. Thank you, Gary. Okay, uh, one of the things in, on the new Domain um, website we've got set up for people to make suggestions. We've noticed quite a few people in the past, lots of people have contacted us about the idea of emailing receipts. Now, of course, you have a difficulty that not everybody has an email address. So there's obviously a system where when you email, people only email people who have an email address. So you need a backup. You need something, a Word document that says we'll do a merge for those people that don't have an email address. And that conditional formatting Gary was talking about before is just the sort of thing we'll use there to say only merge for someone that's got an email address. But I'm going to show you something about doing an email. Now, if we go to Word, and back where Gary was, and um, sorry, receipt dot doc. Oh, it's loading me already. Um, oh, hang on. Let me just get rid of that one. Copy thought. Okay, well, we've got receipts now. What we were doing before, when we were at mailings and um, previewing results. We've got our letter, and we're saying finishing the merge and edit individual documents. Now, there's another option. There's send email messages. Um, now, if you're going to send them as email, what you have to do is you make sure that when you're outputting the merge file in Donman for the name and address, that you include email address. The difficulty, and it's why most people don't want to use that system, is that you're sending everybody a copy of this document. You email them, and then they can modify the document and change the amount. Um, and people find that, you know, like it's a bit awkward, it's like you're giving someone a complete copy of your merge document. Um, and what people would rather do is run the PDF. Now, realistically, there's a limit to how much you can protect yourself because anybody these days with a computer can, in fact, generate something that looks just like your letter because they can go to your website, get your logo, etc. But there's no reason to make it really easy for people and make it too easy. So sending a PDF is a really good idea. And we get people often saying, how can Donman send a PDF? And the answer is Donman can't because as Gary's shown you, when we're doing receipt letters, we're out of Donman. All Donman does is create a text file that you use in Word. So the answer is, can Word send send individual PDFs to people as email? And the answer is no. It's not something Word can do. However, there is a product called PDF Machine, which if you buy, and what we have on here is just a sample copy. It's a demo copy because we haven't actually bought a copy. We might at one point. I think it's only about $100 to buy. It has nothing to do with ASO or Donman, but it's a very good product and it's called PDF Machine. And I'm going to show you using PDF Machine and what it does. So I'm going to go into um, Add-in, and it's under Add-in, and you can see the Add-in is an installed PDF Machine, and this little drop-down menu, Create PDF, and what we want is to um, PDF Mail Move. So what this is going to do is take over from Word and make Word PDF. So I click on this here. Now this is just simply saying it's a test version. Um, when you buy a copy, you don't get that. You can do a test mode, and you can see up on the top of the screen, if I click on the test mode, it won't actually do an email. But we've set these up to set it to our own email addresses. So we'll do it. It's already collected email as a field from our data file like it's integrated into Word, so it's already guessed that email is the field for the email address. And maximum email to send per hour, I'm guessing that's if your mail system has some handy spamming system that says you can't send more than a certain number of emails, but we've got ours on unlimited. And then you can um, save a copy of the files if you want to. But I'm just going to click on Next. And then it gives you the format of the actual email you're sending to someone. So you can actually put carbon copies or blind carbon copies. I've changed the attachment to say receipt. You can make this name anything you like. So I'm going to the subject called this receipt text. Now I'm going to make that uppercase there. And it finds your 
So again, you can click in if you want to be in the email and change the font and all the normal things you can do in Word. The difference is that when I do the mail merge now, every person that gets the letter gets that little simple mailing and they get their receipt already converted as an individually customised PDF for that person. Um, and it's, it's printing two or four or five merge documents, so they're all going out. But you can see there are two email errors. No email field for data four and data five. So that these email addresses here, the three successful, had email addresses and these didn't. So now what we need is a way of saying how do we mail to the people that don't have email addresses. And this is where we use Word. Now what I would suggest, there's many ways of doing this, is that you would, unfortunately you will need to have a second after merge document. A document, like if your normal receipt letter is called receipt.doc, you might have a receipt no email dot doc. And in that document, what you will do is go into, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can go into mailing and uh, the, uh, sorry, edit recipient list. And when you go to recipient list, if you find the field called email, for some reason it ends up being up the front of me. I don't really know why. Oh, here it is, email. There's a little drop-down list here. And if we say blanks, non-blanks, advanced. Now, if I say on blank, it means it will only, um, I apologise, word is on me. Um, okay, let me try that again. Andrew, just while you're doing that, uh, we just had a question while you're doing that. If you can show the email that comes out of that as well, is that possible? Or uh, it's on another machine at the moment. I don't know. Have we got a copy of that? Um, we'd have change to change one of the email. Yeah, we'll change one of the email addresses to come onto this machine. So yes, we will do that in a second. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go into um, mailing and. and Edit recipient. No, no, sorry. Sorry. Edit recipient list. Okay, and go to email. Now, if I say blank, then it's saying only mail is blank. Now, if I save that as a special merge document, so when I run that version of our letter, I will not do that to email. I'll do an ordinary mailing, and so that will only mail to people that have no email address. The other master document I'll use for the PDF machine and they will get the email. Now I know that may seem a little cumbersome to some of you, but there is really no choice. If you want an email receipt, you will always have a problem with people. No email, you'll need a second document. There is no magic document, no way we know where you can set something up that will automatically email a PDF to people that have an email address and produce a merge file for those that don't. You do have to have two separate documents. Now, in terms of the um, the email, let me just change that to say non-blank, so it's all email, and I'm going to edit this, and this one, I'll change the I'll make sure I work with the top two here, yeah. Oh, okay. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Scroll back down. Huh? Scroll back down to the email field here. Yeah. Isn't that the one? Oh, it is, it is down the bottom here, is it? Yeah. Right, okay. So we'll change to, what is it? Update. Donmain.net.au. Close. Okay. And then I'm going to go to no to add in and PDF machine and PDF mail merge, and you'll see that it does remember um, the choices you've made before. So you don't have to type everything here again. See, it's, it might spell and check everything up and fix. 
So now we'll move the same document, but we will get one of those to this particular computer we're on now and we can show you what comes out. Oh. And also we have to load the roots up we have to load output here. So there we go, that's work. Um, I'll bring up my mail here. And it's only just sent me. Hmm? It's only just sent me email. All right. We didn't have we didn't have that whole paper. Uh, okay. Yeah, Gary's saying we didn't have Outlook open, so it's only just sending the emails now. It'll take a couple of seconds to come back to us here. Um, okay. So we will have that for you. So that's how you can. Um, Oh, no, we don't want to take the document, do we? No. no. Okay. Anything yet? No. Yeah, it'll take a few minutes to come back in, but we will show you. But what you will see is just a simple email with what we have put as the details, and then in the as an attachment, a PDF which has the details of the receipt. Um, Speed up, ask it to send the speech. Here we are. Oh, it's just under, under liberal of the speech. Update, and .net. That is the worry. So we just discovered something about update email or something. That's Okay, this is what it looks like. So this is what you will get back. And if we look at the speed of PDF, there it is. So you see it looks very much like exactly what's on the screen now. This PDF machine box at the there is because this is an unlicensed version. We haven't paid for the license. When you pay the hundred dollars or whatever it is, then this won't appear. But you can see that it's a perfect copy of the word letter in every way, except that it's um not being turned into a PDF. And it's not editable. Nobody can just go and change it without spending a bit of work. Okay. Now, did you have anything else, Gary? Yeah. I think that's that's it for today from us. But we're really open to answering questions. Gary will come back around the microphone. You need to be close to this, yep. Gary. So, uh, Marla, if you want to let us know what the questions are. Yes, certainly there's been a few questions and, and, and certainly I'll just remind people that we won't be opening the phone line so if you do have any questions please uh, post them in the question pane on the control panel which is on your right hand side of your viewer window. Yes. So and um, we'll do our best to answer them. So going right back to the beginning of, your, of the session, <laughs> um, there was a couple of questions and um, I'm hoping Gary can just clarify a couple of those things there. One of them was from Tanya which was, can you only choose text files not Word documents? assuming for the mail merge? For the, for the data source, yes. Right. Um, and can you just clarify the, the barcode that you showed, what, what that was for? The, the barcode would be, when, I mean, most people when you get a, a bill nowadays, you'll see above your address, you've got the, uh, a barcode there. What that means is that if you, you're using, as I said before, either the quick address system or the... Uh, the uh, or the, the rapid addressing tool, you can, on your data screen, you've got a field called DPID. What that is a short form of what basically becomes the barcode, and it means that when you send out your mail, instead of just pre-sorting it, say you're, you're doing the first bit of work for Australia Post, you can pre-sort as barcode, and if you barcode, Australia Post can give you a much better discount on the mail. Yes, yeah, so and there, there are limits. Um, I think mean, I think it's a minimum of three hundred per you know mailing tray. But the more you spend to a particular area, so if you're in you know Melbourne and say, well look, you know I've got five thousand units of mail that are pretty much going to one or two mail centres within the Melbourne metro area, I can get a fair discount on that. Uh, and and it can be depending on volume, you know, might be twenty cents, twenty five cents per uh, item of mail less than the standard rate. So, so very very uh, worthwhile having. 
Thanks, Gary. Another question from Bobby was um, her receipt uh, that she does is in a text box, but does this? It, 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 but it keeps on moving. Any thoughts as to why? Uh, it just means that the text box hasn't been locked to the position on the screen. Okay, so when when you have the text box, if you right click on it, there, there should be an option there. I think it's called Format Frame or Format Text Box, where you can tell it to lock to the position on the screen. If somebody's put it in just to say. Uh, basically, like a table box, uh, it will move up and down with your actual, um, you know, your text. So if you've got three lines of address, your receipt will move up three lines. Yeah, it should be locked to the bottom of the page. That's the option you should choose. If you lock it to the bottom of the page, it'll always be at the bottom of the page, no matter how long or short your letters are. Letters are. Okay, this one from Sharon. Um, she she um, missed the first part of the webcast, but she's saying, as she asked, are you finding mail merge names from selection reports already selected? Well, we did that cover early. that, yes. That was the first part of the webinar. Can you just clarify that then? Well, we, we, we can't run it again. No. <laughs> we'll clarify what, sorry? Uh, uh, she, she's asking if you're finding the mail merge names from selection reports already selected. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit confused by the question yes. too. Yes. I am finding it from data that's already been created. I've already done the selection file in Donman and I've already created my file. So if I've done a selection of people saying, okay, this is for my uh, you know, Easter 2012 current donor list, then I would have done my selection and created the merge file in order to do the letters. So yes, I, I do have to do that. Um, and a question when you were going through the Word documents and, and the different versions of Word, um, can you just explain the difference between a dot .doc and a dot .docs with this X on the end? Oh, look, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, in, in the version of Word, by default, when you get Word 2007 or 2010, uh, Microsoft changed the format of the document to not just be doc, to have, it's actually got an extension that is doc X. As I said, when you go through my computer, it will look exactly the same as the doc, uh, because they both have the word icon on them. But they do save as, as different sorts of files. But when you merge, I have to have you know one way or the other. I can't have a mixture of them. I can clarify that a little bit. Um, what happened was that Microsoft decided they wanted everything to be web-based. So the earlier doc format is basically text and some peculiar codes and Microsoft uses to format their documents. Now, from Office 2007, they said we want to make sure that all Word documents are in fact web documents. So DocX is actually HTML. It's actually like a web page and because it's much easier to embed web type content in them. So even though you can't see that when you look at it, it is in fact a HTML document. That's why they went to that DocX format and why they're not compatible so that really everybody in your office has to be using either one format or another or you run into trouble. Okay, thanks Andrew. Just quickly, um, a few people are having to leave. So just letting you know that, that we will be running further our webcasts on this. A couple of people have asked that as well and there will be details in the newsletter. But just on to the next question, um, and, and this is on the same subject, is would you recommend switching all the templates to a doc or remaining with doc? At, at, at six or one, half dozen or the other. It doesn't matter, but you have to do them all. You can't. You know, as I said, you can't have half and half. If you're going to change, uh, everyone's on the newer version of Word, then yes, you can change them to DocX, but really you're not going to gain much out of having that format change, but you did just need to change everything consistently. Yet if you don't have, you know, uh, all of your documents and uh, called DocX, then some of them are going to fail to work when you do the merge. If you do have a mixture of new and old versions of Word, Microsoft have, have, have provided a system where you can use an old version of Word and still have DocX. You can run an update from Microsoft to do that if you really want to. But we've never seen a reason for it. You know, I mean, I tend to just set my Word up to default to say things as Doc because I know it'll be compatible with everybody else. There may be some advantages, but like I said, I've never come across it. Minor. Okay, on the um, area that you were covering with the PDFs, uh, Colleen's asking, would you have to have the receipt reproduced with artwork as a receipt document um, to be able to do that? Yes, you would, because if your receipt's going out on a printed form, then obviously the printed, what you're printing onto, could have your logo and various things. 
But if you're PDFing it, you're not, you know, that way the person won't see any of that. So yes, you would have to have a scanned version of that information um, to be able to do that. Okay, and the question from Lynn, um, how do you correct alignment on this receipts area if all the information such as the name, particulars, amount is askew? Well, that, that should just be to do with your margins and your paragraphs, just as, as you would have with a normal document. But if I said, you know, all of these fields need to be moved across or whatever it may be, So on the fields, right click, get a paragraph, and I can change my indentation left or right, whatever I need to do to order, or in order to get that alignment sorted out. So if I said, look, I want them all to be 0.6, the best now moves those across on the page, and if I save that, then that's, that's basically how it's going to be from now on. Okay. Uh, question from Gemma. Gary, is, is it possible to insert the pledge amount into the letter or email to be merged? Is it when we're processing <laughs> doing this? <laughs> because if I'm doing the reminder letters, it's the field that I already have. But if I'm doing the receipt, then yes, it's a field that I can explore. Okay, and another one from Gemma was, is there any backup file of the emailed PDF receipts automatically created in the DM work? No, they're not created in DM work, but I think in the PDF machine it did give you the option to save those into a separate folder. So ideally you might create in that one called, you know, emailed receipts, and you point the point PDF machine into that to say, look, when I do the email receipts, I can keep copies of them there. Okay, and it looks like just our last question from Jenny is, in the receipt field at the bottom of the page, uh, she sometimes has to add more fields after merging. What is the best way to deal with this as she tends to modify it after the merging? Where are the more fields? Sorry, I didn't ask the bit. The, the question is... Oh. Sorry? Sorry? The question itself is a bit vague. Where, where are the fields coming in? That's true. <laughs> um, Can we have an example? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it, uh, and basically you have to go back to the initial document is what you're saying? Yeah, because there's the theme, And then the remerge? Filing where, where the place of all the fields will be. So perhaps, she, uh, um, I mean, perhaps Jenny, if she's still on the line, she can clarify it, but uh, perhaps she means she's adding in extra m information after she's merged it rather than more fields. Yeah, or, or send an email or something, Jenny, with, you know, the, the document or an example of what's happening, and then we can follow that up more. Uh, sorry, just a couple of other questions have come through now. Um, Colleen's asking, who is the supplier for the PDF machine that you demonstrated? It, you just look for it online. If you just do a Google search of PDF machine, you'll find it, and you can download a free copy if, like we've done today, like managed to buy online by um, Gary Pine. Now, yeah, it's come up straight away. Um, and a couple more questions from one from June. Is there um, is it possible to select the address type, such as the home address or the PO box no, or the street address? when you Marla, generate the receipt. Marla, just wait yes. one for a minute. We're just going to, okay. going to we're just going to the broad gun software site to show you that you can get product there and download PDF machine Okay, or there's a comparison of the different products they've got. So there's an, a, a few different versions that would do different things. Um, but if you compare the products so basically if you get it like we did, just go to Google search for PDF machine, you get to this site very quickly, as we did, and all of the information is there. Sorry, Marla. Okay, Marla, Sorry. go. Sorry, I, I thought it was a simple question that you could do two things at once. <laughs> um, the question... <laughs> There's a question from June. It was, um, is it possible to select the address type, such as so the home address or the PO box or the street address, when she generates the receipt? Yes. That's the question on the screen. When you create the receipt file, to say, do you want to use the second address? And if you say yes, you'll then get 
an option to choose which address type you want to say, uh, you know, send the receipt to. And that's the same for all of your merge. You have that same option. And just for another one from Tanya, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to help with, but um, she's saying that the template they use is perfect, but when they upload it, it comes up with different font sizes and some words are bolded. It doesn't matter how many times they've saved it, it doesn't seem to fix it. Have you got any thoughts we on that? We can't do that in a webinar. However, I'll mm. just say general things about that. Almost always when you get those problems because someone's added different fonts to the actual letter that's included, you must make sure that the fonts are only there if the fonts or margins are set in the major document, the, the receipt dot doc. If you put any font changes into the letter that's read in, they can sometimes bleed through and have other effects. But it's not possible for us to deal with that you know, without seeing the document. We really need to do that as a support call. But that's generally the area where you'll find the problem will be. Do you agree with that, Gary? Yeah, the application you might find it is if you put that view fill code button up the top here, at the end of the text line that's you know, pointing to the document, you'll have something like slash asterisk and so you'll have a command that looks something like that. So it's got a slash and asterisk and a merge format. That is something that, that will happen as soon as you um, you know, try and modify the text on that field. Word will automatically update the field because we're not saying that the text itself isn't there and you'll get this command in there and that will do exactly what you're saying. It will basically, um, you know, it could take the bold attribute from, you know, one word and put it in the middle of a sentence, the middle of a word. Um, it's a horrible thing to see but it's very easily re remedied. Okay. Thank you, Gary, and, and thank you, Andrea. That uh, seems to be the bulk of our questions for today. Um, as we mentioned earlier, that we will chase up in all the questions that have been posted today. Um, we will follow up and we'll make them available, answers available to everyone that's attended today. Today's webcast has been recorded, so uh, if your colleagues or you, you'd like to re uh, view it again, we will have it available via the Donman website in the next week or so with any luck. Um, so we'll leave it there today. Just uh, thank you, Gary and Andrew, for a really good session today. It was very, uh, lots of good information and lots of questions and uh, lots of good feedback um, from everyone who's saying, yes, do more of these, which we will be. Um, the next webcast is on the 7th of March and it's an overview of the Donman volunteer system. So it's more of a product overview and it will go for one hour at 2 o'clock Melbourne time on the 7th of March. Uh, details will be in our newsletter, uh, which you'll receive via email. Uh, so that concludes our webcast today. Thank you again for joining us, and we hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks, Marla.